All right, guys, here we are. We're back. I, last week, we talked about mitosis and mitosis in uh, organisms. Um, just so you guys could see my notes a little bit, but this was what we did last week. We filled in our mitosis notes. We did our mitosis worksheet, and you should have done your mitosis ed puzzle. Um, and that mitosis ed puzzle was uh, with the amoeba sisters. You know, Mrs. Bond loves the amoeba sisters. And you also should have had mitosis identifying the stages. Uh, you are going to have a quiz this week on mitosis um, and the stages. And we're also going to be talking about this idea of the difference between asexual and sexual reproduction. And we're going to be making a T-chart this week. And it goes back to week six. And week six, we looked at the different organisms. I'd like to finish that worksheet um, <clears throat> by looking at the next organism. And the next organism is your yeast. Now, yeast is a tiny single-celled fungus that makes bread dough rise. Now, if you had... I know yeast was very difficult to get through uh, the last couple of weeks. Um, I also could not get it, um, but it is an organism and it does help bread dough rise. And you should have realized that when we did the lab um, and it converts sugar into alcohol, yeast reproduced by budding. That should be a familiar word when you made your foldable with the types of asexual reproduction. Budding is one of them. As the small bud grows, it receives a copy, keyword, copy, of the parent's nucleus. When the bud pinches off, the new cell is smaller than the parent, but genetically identical. Another keyword. So if you're talking about budding, you're talking about copying, you're talking about genetically identical, identical this is asexual reproduction. So if you made your prediction correctly, asexual would have been the right answer and if we go to our website we can find the picture of the yeast and we say here's the words again we determine that the hint words have led us to the fact that it's asexual reproduction and that is true now please keep aware of those key words because you're going to be making a uh, venn diagram that determines the differences between sexual and asexual uh, on your worksheet from a couple weeks ago, they had the flower next. You had to make a prediction about the flower. It says, like other flowering plants, the sunflower relies on insects for reproduction. Bees search for nectar and pick up pollen and spread it from flower to flower. When sperm-filled pollen grains contact the stigma, it grows a tube that reaches into the ovary. Well, wait a second. Are you saying that sperm are pollen yes i am they are so flowers use the sperm and the stigma okay so not exactly the same as um same terms as humans but ovary is the same and whether it's a human or a flower it means eggs so sperm eggs hmm that is keywords that are related to the reproductive types of sexual reproduction so let's see are we correct yes flowers reproduce sexually which you wouldn't think about but they do next is this little picture um doesn't look like much and this is the way it looks underneath the microscope and it's called a volvox it's a microscopic green algae that lives in ponds. Thousands of individual cells group together to form a colony. The spheres inside the colonies are miniature clones. I don't know if, you're, if you know the word clones from Star Wars, Clone Wars, of the parent. But the word clone is identical. It means the same thing. They're identical to the parent. So now if you hear that, if the G DNA is identical, automatically you should be thinking asexual reproduction. Let's take a look at the, our website if we are correct, and we are. 
Uh, on your, oh, I don't know if I got this in the right order. Um, do I have this page next? Mm. All right. I think I have the tree next. So there's a little bit of a longer reading passage here. Redwood trees, also known as sequoias, are the tallest and largest trees in the world. Like other conifers, which means they are um, uh, like evergreens, the trees bear male and female cones that rely on the wind for pollination. So male and female should be key words. Pollination now is a key word um, from what we read in the sunflower. New trees also sprout from large shallow roots, generating a circle of trees identical to the parent. Wait a second. Holds on one minute. We have this male and female and pollinations, which to me are key words for sexual, but then it says also sprout identical to the parent. So that's going to be asexual. Now that means that these sequoias, huh, wait a second. Let me look on my website, find the picture of the sequoia. I definitely see sexual with male and female. Whoops. And I definitely see... Uh-oh, that's not right. And I see asexual. That's not right, which means it must be both. Oh, is that a trick question? Okay. Even though flowers are strictly female, uh, the cones, uh, pine cones and evergreens and hemlocks and um, other uh, Douglas firs, those type of things, those are both. Uh, next one is a bird. Like most bird species, bald eagles mate for life. Wow, okay, so same as the seahorses, they mate for life, just like often humans do. The females lay on... Um, lay uh, one, that should be one, one to three e eggs per year, both male and females. Okay, here we go. Males and females, keywords, incubate the eggs, hunt for food, and maintain the nest. Their courtship involves elaborate calls and flight displays, including a tandem free fall in which partners lock talons and separate just before hitting the ground. All right, that's pretty intense. Okay, so that is during their reproductive cycle that they are mating in a in the air. They are mating during a free fall. Um, now that mating ritual that should be a key word: mating and male female. The fact that it's male female and they are maintaining their nest. You could even say that they are. Um, they are helping together to develop those eggs. And there is a certain amount of nurturing from the birds and from the baby chicks. Okay. So now we know that this is definitely going to be a sexual uh, reproductive cycle for the bald eagles. So I find that picture online and to double check it. It is correct. Moving on to the butterfly, the monarch butterfly. With monarch butterflies, you see those often uh, in the springtime. They uh, go through a migratory pattern. Um, they're orange in color. Uh, they are also very fragile. Uh, the monarch butterflies mate, uh-oh, here's a key word already, in the spring, just prior to the northward migration. After chasing the female to the ground, the male attaches to her and transfers a capsule with sperm. So transferring of sperm and food, and she journeys north and lays her eggs on milkweed plants. Okay, so that's what happens, laying her eggs. Eggs is also a key word, so we're saying there's sperm, there's eggs, there's mating. All of that means that it is sexual reproduction. And to double check on our site, uh, click on that beautiful monarch butterfly, and we click on where it says sexual reproduction. And it is green, so that is good. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to skip the corals. That was really just for fun. I think that's the last piece. I went a little bit out of order. Next, the earthworm has both male and female reproductive parts. Hmm, so if they have both, that's interesting. Uh, to reproduce, two worms come together to exchange sperm. Hmm, sperm sounds like a keyword. Each worm deposits its own egg, sounds like a keyword. And the donated sperm into a gooey cocoon that's left in the soil. Wow. Worms have both. This is sounding to me like sexual, but how come they have both? Does that mean it's asexual? Hmm. Maybe it's. Let's check it out. So here's the picture of the worm. Okay. Is it sexual? It is, even though they have both reproductive parts, that's extremely interesting. Um, this helps for their survival. Uh, so they can, they can essentially, if they have both parts, they don't need to search for a mate. They could use any, um, any worm would be good enough because every worm has both parts. Um, so it doesn't necessarily need to be a female worm. It could be any worm. So it helps for their survival. Next is this little gecko looking thing. Let's see, what does it say? A whiptail lizard. The all female whiptail lizard is able to reproduce without a male, huh? To fertilize her eggs. And this is called parthenogenesis. Females take turns playing males during mating. After a false mating, a false mating. Hmm, I don't know. So it's not mating. It's a false mating. The female from the mating pair will lay eggs, and the daughters are identical. Wait a second. Hmm. So they reproduce without a male, and they're identical. So wait, if I see identical, I would be thinking asexual. But there is a form of mating or false mating, as they call it. Let's double check our website um, and find the lizard. And let's see, is it sexual? Nope. Is it both? Nope. It is asexual, which means Keyword here, identical. Next is our sand scorpion. Ooh, I've never seen one of those. They look a little scary. Um, they dance together for several hours. When the male finds a good place to deposit a packet of sperm, he puts the female on top of it. When the dance is over, a female will sting her partner and make him her next meal. Oh, hmm. okay. So there is a male in here, there is sperm in here, there is a female, there is um, uh, a place to deposit. So you're talking, you know, the female kills the male after um, the dance, and then she eats him. Well, imagine, imagine if that was a human ritual. Let's take a look at our scorpions, which are quite scary looking. Uh, it sounds to me, if there's male and female, it is sexual. Yuppers, it is. Uh, next one, that should be familiar, garden strawberries. Plant grows modified stems called runners. Hmm, I don't know if you remember this, but those stems called runners were in your types of asexual reproduction. Let's keep reading. Along the runners, uh, tiny new strawberry plants take root. Whoops. Each new plant is identical. Okay, identical to the parent. That's a key word. Insect pollinators also visit strawberry flowers. So now pollinators should be a key word for sexual reproduction. And pollen from one flower joins the eggs to another to form these seeds. And those seeds eventually sprout to make new fruit or new strawberries. So there's a couple of key words here. Identical to the parent and pollinators. 
I'm going to say, and I'm going to double check. Let's see. So if it has the word pollinator, pollinator is sexual. So yes, that should be true. But there is a form that also it's identical to the parent. So that would be asexual. So therefore it must be both. Hmm. Uh, next organism, the red kangaroo can leap as far as 12 feet in one jump. When it is mating time, mating keyword, males box each other with powerful jumping legs. The winning male deposits his sperm, keyword, in one female where an egg, keyword, is fertilized, keyword, after... Only 33 days, the undeveloped young is born. It will continue to grow for another seven months within the mom's pouch. Hmm. Wow. That's really interesting that it grows in the mom's pouch. Does anybody know what the baby kangaroo is called? A baby kangaroo? Sylvia, do you know what the baby kangaroo is called? Can you what is it called? A jelly. Nice. She used that word in Scrabble the other night. A baby kangaroo is called a joey. Okay, and that's developing the pouch. Mating, egg, fertilized, sperm, all these keywords means that it's sexual. Let's just double check on our site. We find the picture of the kangaroo and we double check it. Make sure it goes green. Very good. All right. Um, let's take a break here.